Well, what is up, everybody? Keith, a.k.a. Gator Guy 231 here to break down Saturday, February 6th, four-game Premier League slate. We got four games now. We're seeing more and more of these uh, actually getting more than one game at one time. So this Saturday, we have two games at 10. And ironically enough, I think of the two lineups, even though they're not the big teams, not the huge favorites, they're the two lineups that are going to decide this slate more than any other. So it is a really good timing. I feel like that's been happening a ton more this season than ever before. It used to always be the game we needed to know the lineup the most about was the one we didn't have. Like, you know, when DraftKings used to have the last game not on the, or on the main slate or things like that. So looking forward to this one. This is a tough build. Um, the first time you look at the slate, you are not going to like what you see. You're going to have all the players you want, and you're not going to have anywhere close to the salary you want to get there. So hopefully I'm going to find you a few values to make this work. Quick reminder, if you enjoyed these, this, this video, um, the NBA videos, the NHL, um, Super Bowl coming up, PGA is blowing up with TK and John, showdowns, picks, one and dones, all that stuff. Hit that subscribe button at the bottom right. Promise you uh, the content that you're going to get at FSI. Um, fully transparent, you know, a lot of times, you know, the core plays that we're going to be giving out uh, to subscribers closer to lock, we, we very much discuss here. So uh, make sure to check it out. Um, promise you won't regret it. All right, let's jump into the odds and then the picks. So just a quick look at odds. Um, let's start like in like chronolog chronological order. Uh, so at 10 a.m., uh, Newcastle plus 207, hosting Southampton plus 152, two and a half total. Southampton very much off of a true embarrassment versus uh, United. Um, I, I feel like I got lucky on that slate. Um, I made a couple of changes, especially late because of the no the no name guy in the, in the middle of the field. I think Oriol Romeu is a player that nobody kind of looks at. It's something that I've been really trying hard. I've been talking to Storm about this, but I'm trying really, really hard to not just look at DFS players when lineups come out, but looking at like the makeup of the team. So, you know, guys in DFS, we don't really target or like non set taking central midfielders, uh, deep line number six, the center back pairings, things like that. Like guys that we don't consider for DFS, but matter enormously in the real game and how the game is going to play out and the game flow. And I just thought uh, Southampton had a new right back um, that was going to be seeing a lot of Marcus Rashford and a new central midfielder um, and not Romeo, not um, even Diallo. And I was like, God, this is kind of scary. And the guy gets a red card in a minute. So, you know, kind of dodged that one uh, by not playing Ward Prowse uh, in late, but uh, felt good. Just something to keep in mind. Like, don't just look at the DFS players. Look at the entire team, you know, just like NFL, you know, Sunday, I'm about to record that after this, but you know, Kansas City missing their left tackle and right tackle. Like, that's big news. Like, no, it doesn't, on a paper and for DFS, doesn't matter. Or, I mean, it doesn't look like it matters, right? Because Tyreek Hill's still there. Travis Kelsey's there. All the targets that I want to play are still there. But how they're going to get the ball and stuff like that, it does matter. All right. Uh, sorry for the for the one-off, but I hope that helped. Other 10 o'clock game. Burnley hosting Brighton. The red hot Brighton the Albion took down... Tottenham took down Liverpool. Can they take down the mighty Nick Pope? We'll see soon. But um, it's only a two total. Yet yeah, that game has a lot of intrigue. 10, uh, 1230 game, Fulham plus 254, hosting West Ham plus 120, two and a half total. In the final game, Manchester United minus 182, hosting Everton, two and three quarter total. All right. So we have no totals over three. So guess what that means? Uh, yes, you guessed it. Uh, hashtag team no goals. The, the team that I love to be on. Is fully in force here. Let's see how we can look at it. Big injury news to kind of look at is Brighton. Red hot Brighton lost Solly March, one of their better players. So that left wing back role that he occupies will be open. Um, more than likely, it's going to be Dan Byrne. Um, and then with the – also, I don't believe have Lamptey. Let me check. They haven't had Lamptey for a while. So that right wing back should be interesting. Um, Saw prediction that Steven Alzate – who scored the goal versus Liverpool could be there at 3,200. He's going to be a value. I'll just discuss a little bit more here shortly. Could see Ben White. Um, see a lot of different guys there. So, you know, Beltman. Let me see. Beltman's questionable for the game. So, yeah, we're just going to have to watch that, but we're going to have it at 10. All right. Let's start the forward position. I think the top forward play for four on the slate. 
I know this is not that gross, but Pascal gross. I know, so cheesy. Sorry, guys. But 9,200, look, God, he went from a month and a half ago to not being the starting 11, to now being one of the most consistent players in DFS. Uh, Andrew Laird said on a previous show, uh, I want to say a couple of weeks ago, uh, when they were when he and Jordan were talking about Pascal Gross, you know, I think Joe, Andrew made a great point. He just always gets there. You just like, look through his luck. He's just always there. 9.4 versus Liverpool, right? Like only four crosses. Yeah, he gets there. All of them, four shots assisted. Absolutely destroyed Tottenham, 25.1. 17.3 floor points versus Fulham. Um, you have 10.5 versus Arsenal. You know, in that time, all that is only one assist. Um, without March, his set responsibility should go up even more. Um, it just makes to and versus Burnley, a team that we know like us play on the counter that know we know gets you know is going to let up a lot of attack. I think Gross is you know honestly because Ford is going to be horrible. I, I I almost had the opportunity to say it again, but I decided to uh, pass on that. But I think that getting the certainty of Gross, who is you know outside of Bruno Fernandez and Luke Shaw, Ward Prowse, maybe Frazier, those are the top four guys in the slate. But you can't play them all. Um, gross side of that $4 ability is huge the guy. I'm going to be building around, um, is going to be a preliminary core play for me. If he were not to be in Lucas Jurassard at 8,300 would be a lock. He would likely have a set monopoly without, without uh, gross and without, um, a March in the lineup. So again, this is why this is so important for this 10 o'clock game happening. Cause I think that that forward spot has to be either gross or Trossard in my opinion, Rashford's GPP, Antonio's GPP. Those guys are both going to be goal and assist or bust. I'm just talking about Trossard. I think if Gross is in, Trossard's a little bit too expensive, but without Gross, he would be a lock. Jaime Rodriguez, you won't know to the last game. He didn't play last game. Gulfy Sigurdsson was great. Um, they just started having to manage Jaime. I 8200 is a fine price. I think that there's a really, really big likelihood that a lot of this slate is going to come down to, do you play like Jaime Rodriguez in your second forward spot, or do you play Ryan Frazier or James Ward-Prowse? Um, I think those are the three guys in that combo of who you're going to play will likely decide this late. Just know Rodriguez, I guess here's my biggest issue with Jaime Rodriguez right now, is when he's in with both Lucas Dean and Gilfie Sigurdsson, he by no means has a set monopoly. Um, Gilfie is taking those in-swingers. Um, Jaime is still going to be taking the in-swingers from his side. Gilfie's right-footed, Jaime is left-footed. But then you have Lucas Dean really does change the gravity. I don't even know if the gravitational pull. I don't know. But it used to be that the ball just is only going to go to Hymas, right? Like the whole entire offense was around getting to Hymas. But Lucas Dean's a great playmaker himself, and so is Gilfi. So you just, you kind of change. And, and then Richarlson's over on the left too. So Everton becomes a lot more balanced when they're fully healthy like they are. And it's not just all going to high miss. And then you add on the fact that United isn't ex exactly a great matchup for an Everton team that's kind of scuffling. So if I haven't shown him, I'm probably leaning towards not playing him. But God, it's tough. I, it, it's it's really tough. It, and it's really close. Um, it's going to be something I'm chewing on. But just understand he's it's super very much in play for cash games. Um, you know, the, the the one issue I guess I would say is make sure you, I think you're going to have multiple spots. I think you're going to have Bruno. I think you're going to have a guy like Tess or Luke Shaw. Um, you know, if he's not in, you know, for cash, I don't want to go to Martial or Cavani, but if you can, but, you know, maybe you can go to Richarlson, 7,400. And depending on what your other spot is, if you have another place, maybe upgrade something. So um, just play around with builds. Uh, all right. Been a lot longer on that than I expected, <laughs> so apologies. Uh, Calvin Wilson, GPP. Jared Bowen is the other. There's two more, like, top floor type of plays. You have Jared Bowen from West Ham, split sets with Aaron Cresswell. Fulham, you know, very much right now. It's giving up a ton of possession um, lately. A lot of that, that's due to matchup, but West Ham's good. Um, so Jared Bowen, he just sat out last match. Um, I would expect him to be back in, but maybe the uh, – Jesse Lin Lingard, if you can hear that, terrible, I know. It, it's pretty seven, like the dad jokes are going to come flying. But, uh, you know, I, I, it'll be curious how West Ham lines up. Like they have a lot of attackers now. You know, you have Antonio, you have Bowen, you have Ben Rama, you have Lingard. Um, you know, Lanzini obviously is like way out of favor, but um, I know I'm probably forgetting somebody. I have Fornals who they like. So, you know, 
we've got a lot of spots. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see. But, you know, I think that they, they play like Ryan Fredrickson in an advanced role last game. I think that uh, that Bowen will just come in for him. That was just probably a maintenance day, and they got away with it. So 7,800 is really solid. Um, again, you know, he's going to be in that range of that Ward Prowse, um, Bowen, Lookman. I should add those two, so apologies. Lookman, Bowen, Ward Prowse, Frazier, Hymas are all within 500 of each other. And once you plug in Gross, um, you know, that's where it would be nice if we get Trossard because you have a little more salary. But once you plug in Gross, you plug in Bruno, and you plug in Shaw or Teus, you're going to be stuck. And, you know, Teus or Shaw could also be Lucas Dean, too. So that's like the construction of the site. It's a really interesting slate because even when you plug those guys in, and those are like the highest floors, you still have a not awesome roster construction after that. I'm not going to like fully get it out. I know that there's some comments that don't love like when I show too much of like a lineup on here. So don't worry. Okay. Well, but yeah, it's just interesting. It's just interesting. Like, let, let me just like, just kind of plug so you can see. So let's say that I use Bowen and then, you know, my lock play is, is Bruno and I go, okay, I really like Luke Shaw. He's awesome. Or I like Lucas Dean. They're only hundred different. I only have 38.75 left. And then, you know, all of a sudden you're not paying up at goalie, right? Because now you only have 32.66 left. So, you know, you're all of a sudden going, I need to punt a defender. I need to punt off a midfield. I need to pay it on a goalie. And I still don't have enough to get, like, I can't get another, I can't play on top of this Ryan Frazier. I don't believe. Let's see where that leaves us. Yeah, 2,600, that's not happening. You can't fill that many spots. So that's what I'm saying. If you use this, and we'll get to it, this is kind of like a core framework. You're going to run out of space. So maybe, you know, you potentially look at going down from gross to two of those four. I don't know. I, I don't really want to get off of gross. So, um, yeah, that's that's kind of framework. All right, back to forward. I'll just leave this up. That, that's, the, that's the first three of my lineup. So there you go. If you've made it this long, there's your bonus. Um, or Charleston, fine. So Lookman, I, I, I talked about Bowen. Lookman, if you don't see Cavalero or Joe Bryan, Lookman should be on Monopoly of sets again for, for full, full him. You know, it's been interesting. His floor almost seemed better when he wasn't on Monopoly sets. We've been excited to play him the last few games, and it's actually been a tad bit more of a disappointment. Still been good. But it's just interesting that, you know, we've been waiting for all this time to get a guy that has, you know, 13.6, 7.6, 9.9, 11.7, .9, without a goal or assist and without sets – and then all of a sudden we get set monopolies and, you know, it goes down. A lot of that might be due to matchup. I thought West Brom was a quite good matchup. I was all over him. So, yeah, that's interesting. I still think he's a good floor. 7,600 is very fair. All right. Big drop off after those in terms of floor. Dwight McNeil is fine. I do worry. Brighton's just been really good. Um, but Dwight McNeil, you know, should definitely be in that conversation. Um, but, you know, split sets with Ashley Westwood. Um, hasn't been the same guy. You know, if you don't see Chris Wood and uh, – uh, Ashley Barnes in there, you know, the, the, the targets and open play are a lot less. Like you're not throwing crosses aimlessly at Videra or uh, Jay Rodriguez like you do Chris Wood or Ashley Barnes. Um, you know, down here again, GPP plays about uh, plenty of them here. Danny Ings, you know, I totally get in GPP. Calvert Lewin, um, now play, I think is fine. Ben Rama, fringe cash. Uh, I, I don't think I'm there. I, I've done it one too many times that uh, I think I'll pass. But, uh, you know, I wouldn't call you crazy. Um, che Adams, GPP, maybe. Yeah, it's, it, it's gross here. Now, what I will say is this, and something I've been playing around with, I do think that the Burnley punt forwards are very in play. And that's one of the big reasons I, I like that we get it early. Not only do I get the gross versus Trossard news and maybe like a value wing back, like Dan Byrne could start left wing back, 3,600 Alzate. Um, you know, if he started, I say for start prediction that he was right wing back, you know, he's 3,200. That would be close to a lock for me. Um, but we got the, the punts here. So I got three Burnley forwards that, yeah, they don't have floors, but they're sub 4K. And while I told you I wasn't excited about any forwards between 4K and like, you know, I guess 6,900 McNeil is fine, but, you know, I was looking at Lookman and Bowen and Hymas. So, you know, punting off Videra, punting off Jay Rodriguez, you know, YOLO goals, you know, it, it could happen. Or even if Goodmanson is playing that right mid spot, 3,600, I think all those are super in play. All of a sudden you plug one of them in and now, you, now you're rocking. I can still get Ryan Frazier. I can get a half decent defender. I'm still paying down a goalie, but I always – most always pay down a goalie if if that's what the site dictates and then you know utility i can still play somebody so 
Yeah, that's kind of my thought at four. All right, gotta speed up. Midfield, um, all those MFs, so let's like, not worry about them. We kind of just went over them. Uh, James Ward Prowse. Uh, look, the, here's the thing about James Ward Prowse and why I'm considering that I think Ryan Frazier, I have ahead of him. So Ryan Bertrand is taking some corners now. Um, it's two straight games with the happening. James Ward Prowse isn't going to have a set monopoly. I don't think that I'm going to prioritize him nearly as much as a guy like Ryan Frazier on the other side of things who does now have a set monopoly for Newcastle. He's playing like this advanced, like number 10 in the whole role, which he lets him just roam all over the floor, uh, field, which is awesome. Last game, last two games, 32 crosses. Like you want a way to my heart, 32 crosses in two games. That will do it. That is a hell of a floor. Um, yeah. And again, 10 a.m. game. So we'll know. We'll know if he's in. That's what I'm telling you. Like, I know that uh, that Newcastle versus Southampton and Brighton versus Burnley didn't look that great at the first game, but it's huge, huge that it's there. Um, John Joe Shelby not in play if there's no Ryan Frazier, but 7,300, no thanks. Yes, he scored last game. Great for those that played him. Um, but another one, Pogba and Sushek, those prices for, for them. GPP only, you know, you won't see any of them. But Sushek always scores, especially when I mention him that I'm not going to play him. So guaranteed goal. Sigurdsson's, if you didn't see um, Hymas, would definitely be in play, but you're not going to know. You, you're you're going to probably have most of your spots locked. So that's where if you have flexibility in the late game, you can do it, but it's the last game. It's tough. Uh, see if there's anybody down here. I'm sure I'm going to miss somebody. Somebody's going to be like, hey, what about this guy? Huh, did my best. There's Lingard. It's 4,900. Only 32 fantasy points per game. Two goals last game, six shots, crazy game. Good for him. Um, you know, I guess he's going to make the most of his loan spell. But, uh, you know, actually, I was going to say, I don't know if I'm going to be on him. You know what? I, I could totally see potentially falling on him as last play in, especially he's playing like on him 10 roll. You know, he's not going to have like a great floor, but sub 5K, we just saw what he did. You know, if you want to talk about a guy with motivation, right? I mean, he what, hadn't played for a year. You know, it's kind of like if like Deli Ali ever got a loan spell, like, all of a sudden, you would see, like, the real Delhi again. But Lindergaard finally has a shot. You know, he knows that this is probably, like, one of the last chances to revive his career. Like, he's helplessly buried on that United bench. So, yeah, I mean, he's going to make the most of it. So, yeah, 4,900, honestly. You know, shout-out to Jen Kurd from our FSI chat, taking down the 10K with Jesse Lindergaard. I, I told him I better see a picture of him in a Lindergaard jersey. Probably something he never expected to say. But, but shout-out to Jen Kurd. Congrats on that huge win. Um Westwood, you know, not probably my type of play at 5K. You know, I, I've, I've told you these, those defensive midfielders that rely on set responsibility to get get their floor aren't my favorite, but 5K is fine. Uh, I probably play Lingard over him. Uh, let's see. If you see St. Maximin, 4,400, you know, I know a lot of people were hoping that he'd start last game. I didn't think he was fit, so I wasn't playing him regardless. Uh, I think I said that. But, yeah, you know, but he starts. You know, you get 70 minutes of St. Maximin at 4,400. I like it. Loftus Cheek's been really good. I'm not like scared of the West Ham matchup, so I'm obviously lost his lost his cheeks in. But those are those are guys I I think are very very viable for cash. And like I said, though, if you have an extra 500 for Lingard, I think that makes a ton of sense too. Um, you know, the punt I just didn't want to bring up. I've already mentioned his name once, but just watch Steven Alzate. Um, you know, one of the predictions I saw this morning had him as right wing back. If he starts at wing back at 3200, you know, just just lock and load. And again, you'll know at 10. All right, defender, we're almost done. Promise. I already have Luke Shaw over here. You know, Luke Shaw, a.k.a. Trent Alexander-Arnold of 2020, Lucas Dean of 2020. Like, floors are phenomenal. He's taking a majority of set pieces. Um, has open play value. Like, you know, never expected to see this type of Luke Shaw, but 6,700. Again, it's like the third guy in for me. Um, United's biggest favorite. Bruno and Luke Shaw are the only two floor players really on their team. Um, yeah, I, I like him a lot. And he subbed at half of that 9-0 game, so... Like Storm, when it happened, everybody in our in our Discord was like, Shaw's out. And Storm, you know, jumps in. He's like, one, he's already crushed value. You need him to cash. And two, he probably just bought himself a start, like a guaranteed start on Saturday. So shout out to Storm for the forethought. Um, if you don't love him or like if for some reason he wouldn't start and you don't like Tess, like Lucas Dean standing right there. So that's a great thing about that last game is you have the exact price pivot that you need. And Lucas Dean will do just fine. Um Cresswell, you know, I think is very in play at 5,800. I think it's really hard to pay up the second defender slot. It's the type of construction that I'm planning. But, you know, if you have the ability, Cresswell has a decent floor. Um, 
I think the next guy that I'm most interested in is Ryan Bertrand at 4,500. We know Newcastle is a team that, you know, I always have said they bunker, but they've been very much an attack the last few games. But Bertrand's taking some corners, always has pretty decent open play value. You know, if he was in the midfield and, he, and I said he has split sets and he's playing wide like a left mid, and he said has half of the sets with James Ward-Prowse, you go, oh my God, I'm locking him in. Yeah, he's that defender. And we go, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I kind of want to pay down. So Ryan Bertrand, really, really good play. Even if he becomes your utility play, um, I think he is really solid. Dan Byrne, decent shot. That he's playing right, left wing back, 3,600 for Burnley. And then if you don't have the salary for all of them, I'm sure I'm missing some other guys, but, you know, those Burnley center backs, you know, it always comes back to Burnley center backs. You know, my dude, my king of the pitch winner um, that got me into the tournament, Ben Mee, 2,800, very in play. You have Tarkowski, 2,600. So, you know, I, I'm just curious, where's Lewis Dunk? You know, they have like a similar goal equity to Lewis Dunk, yet he's $1,500 more. So, you know, YOLO, Burnley, center backs, always in play. Finally, goalie. Look, for me, I, I can't get to De Gea. I, I don't think I want to get to De Gea. I don't really want to pay 5200 for Fabianski. I think Sanchez is really hot for Brighton. So, you know, he would be the, the top pay up for me um, just because uh, Brighton's just playing so well. But um, McCarthy is fine at 4800 I think that, you know, I'm going to gravitate towards the Areola, um, Pope. Um, I don't know if I'm going to fully pump, but like, I don't think that, you know, just because you have Bruno and Luke Shaw that all of a sudden Olsen, if he started, you know, Pickford's questionable, um, are out of play. So, you know, pay down a goalie. That'll probably be how I'm going to handle this. Like, all right, that'll do it. I have no idea how it did on time. Hopefully it was entertaining, if nothing else. Thank you guys for watching. Really do appreciate it. Appreciate all the support. Uh, if you haven't hit subscribe, please hit now. We are almost to 2,000 subscribers in our first year as a YouTube channel. Would have never guessed that when we started. So thank you to all of you for the support. Once again, Keith, aka Gator Guy 231. See you.